All right, everyone. So today I wanted to do a video on something that's been really, really fun for me, and that is shortcuts in iOS. So that's for either the iPad OS or for an iPhone. So what I'm going to do is for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use my iPad. It's very similar. The only difference is with the, the larger screen real estate on an iPad, um, it's a little bit easier. It kind of separates the windows a little bit to make the coding part easier. So what I'm going to do is just show you some of the things, and it's going to be a basic video of what I am using this for. Um, so it's a very inexpensive way to get into home automation. I basically have the Philips Hue lights, um, a few of the Wemo outlets, and uh, two motion sensors that also do humidity and temperature. So, you know, this whole setup, you're probably talking a few hundred dollars and it gives you quite a bit of automation. So let's go ahead and jump right into the iPad here. And what I'm gonna do is just quickly do an overview for those that don't understand. There's two apps. There's the Shortcuts app and the Home app. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is first set up your home. So when you click into Home, it's gonna look something like this. Very basic, very, very easy. Um, in this, it's going to show you all of your things, all of your devices, your smart home devices. So for me, um, at the very bottom, it's showing my Arlo camera. Uh, that's, you know, about $200 right now. And all of my different lights, my Apple TV, and just a few sensors. And from there, we can go ahead and start developing a few shortcuts. So this is good to set this up first to get all your, your accessories into the home app and when you're done with that and everything's functional you can go out of the home app and jump into the shortcuts app so this is where you're actually going to be doing your shortcuts and your smart home integration now it's important to mention that you don't have to do all of this on the apple shortcuts if you want to use if this then that um, you can use that as well. And there's other apps and websites that can help you through this stuff, but this is just a quick tutorial of basic things that will make your life easier. So I'm gonna start off with one that I really, really like. It's just how's the house. So this is something that I would use um, to make sure that I'm not gonna, you know, come down to a burned down house or um, a house that's very dry or too humid. So what I have set here is to get information from my humidity sensors, temperature sensors, and as you can see through the code, I'm basically gathering that information. I'm having it put in degrees Fahrenheit. I'm rounding it to the ones place, and then you set variables. So this basically puts a name tag to what you're coding. So for here, I'm setting the living room temperature and the basement humidity to relative humidity. And as we go down, um, you can basically show it or tell it how you want it to show the information. So for here, where it says text, that is telling me or telling the Apple shortcuts how we want that information to show up. From there, we have an if function that basically gives the parameters of what would be considered acceptable ranges. And if we're within tolerances of what I say is okay, then the house is good. And if not, it says alert, check the house. So if we go through here and hit the play button, it's gonna run through this whole scenario. And it says the house is good. It also pops up a little prompt there that shows you what the temperatures and humidities are. So everything's good. You can see the upstairs is 69 degrees, the basement is 61 everything looks to be working perfectly. So you're probably asking at this point for this example, you know, do I have to go through this app and go do this whole thing? Um, it doesn't seem very intuitive or user friendly. This is the development side of it. So if we had done and we go back out all the way back to the main page. So we're, we're just in our iPad here or our iPhone and on the left hand side, you can see at the top here, we've got different things. How's the house? So that is a much quicker and simpler way to do this. Um, 
and that should run the application for us. Now, for some reason it did not. So let's just click it again. And it says the house is good. Now, if we had an issue where any of those metrics for humidity or temperature were outside of what was acceptable, it would pop up saying alert, check the house. And that would prompt me to go back into the home app and see what's wrong. So again, when you're at home, probably not that big of a deal, unless you have multiple levels and it might be kind of nice to know if, why is the basement getting really, really cold or really, really hot. Um, so that's a really, really neat feature. Another one that I'm gonna show you that I have not seen anywhere online and it's very, very basic is called record this. So if we click in, I'm gonna show you what I have. And it's basically um, just an, a shortcut that if say you're in a meeting and you wanna record something quickly and you wanna be discreet about it, or um, you're in school and you wanna record a lecture, but you don't wanna be obnoxious about it, I basically have it where it's going to set the volume of my device to 0%. It's gonna turn the brightness of the screen to 0%. Um, it's going to record the audio and it is going to save the audio. So right now on this one, I created this in my iPhone. So as you flip between your iPhone and iPad, certain scripts may not be compatible. So for instance, if I want uh, on my iPhone, the flashlight to come on, that code would not necessarily work with the iPad because there is no flash on this. So just something to be mindful of. And so right now it's saying it cannot vibrate the device. And actually I'm hoping this doesn't screw up my screen recording because um, I am doing a screen record. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the brightness back up. But as you can see, it walks through that and it would dim my screen, record audio, and then automatically save it to my iCloud drive. So that is really, really cool. Um, you know, something that I could see being very useful. So we'll hit done out of that. Um, another thing I wanna show is very basic way of documenting your data into a spreadsheet. So that kind of to show an apples to apples comparison that how's the house shortcut that I have that tells you if there's any issues. I actually have another one that's very similar and it's called house information. And basically what we're doing here is the same sort of steps, except we're adding at the very, very bottom, we're gathering all this data, we're adding the date, and at the bottom, we're appending this text. So what that does is in shortcuts, it actually allows you to save all that information into a spreadsheet. So this code um, is gathering all of my information in various parts throughout the day or based on certain triggers I can document the data. So if I wanna know over long term, if say my programming for my thermostat is working correctly and I wanna document that throughout the day or night, I can do that. So I just ran through a test and you can see it's got all this information that I've logged throughout the past few days. If I go back now, you'll see into my, my cloud drive, I have this house information that was just updated. So if I click on it, what it's gonna do is it's actually logging all of that information. So right here, it's got my entire log. I've got the date, the time, the inside humidity, or the upstairs humidity is 39%. I got 69 degrees upstairs. My basement is 36% and my basement is 61 degrees. Um, so this is something that can be really, really useful um, in a number of different applications. And I'll just kind of show that to you, another thing that I have. And I'm trying to kind of throw a whole bunch out here at once of things that are very, very useful and can be very simple. Another one is um, logging sickness. So if one of my kids is sick, I can actually have this run through and document the sickness. So for parents out there, this might be important for someone that has a fever for multiple days and is showing different symptoms. So we're gonna go ahead and just kind of walk through what this would look like. Log sickness. Which one? Leah. What's 
103.5. Runny nose and a sore throat. So it will run through that whole script basically. And as we go through here, it should create its own uh, drive, cloud drive. Now, the whole thing is I created this one on my iPhone and I don't know if it's a matter of the screen recording um, causing the issue, but I'm gonna go ahead and just run that again. So we'll log sickness and you can do it this way as well. You don't have to do it through Siri and it's Leah. You can type it in 103.5 and she's got a runny nose. And we gave her some Tylenol. Feel better, Leah. So we even had that little blurb at the end to feel better. If we hit done, let's go back and see if this worked this time. So it did, it automatically added that file. Sick tracker, if we click on it, it loads up and there you go, it documented that. So um, again, the trigger could be you use Siri, you can uh, just go in and actually click on to that shortcut and it saves you time in the long run. You can also use your Apple HomePod um, to document this sort of stuff. Really, really cool. I mean, it's, it's endless on the things that you can do with the shortcuts. Um, another one that I have that's set up is the motion lights. Um, so what you can do is, and again, these are $22 sensors that I bought off of Amazon that have motion sensors, temperature, and humidity. And so... I don't have an answer for that. Is th there something else I can help with? Thank you. So basically what we can do is we can set up our motion sensors throughout the house to go ahead and click some lights on. So very simple and we can walk through this one. We basically set the home. We want the living room window to turn to, let's say 100% brightness. And we only want it for six seconds, we'll say, because and we'll bump that up to seven seconds. And after seven seconds, we're gonna have it turn off that light. So we are going to go ahead and run this little test. Alexa, turn off living room window. And as you can see, it turned off the living room window. And when this senses that I'm walking past it, it is going to turn that light on for seven seconds. And as you can see on the screen, it's doing its thing. And then it will turn back off. All right, guys, so I just want to take you through how to do a quick shortcut. So say we want to take a picture um, by clicking a shortcut. And we're going to do something, hopefully, to make people laugh as they're getting their picture taken with you. Um, so after we click on the take picture button we are going to wait for three seconds and from there we are going to have siri speak something to us and we're going to have her say say cheese and from there we are going to the camera settings and we're gonna take a photo, so we're gonna drag this over. We're gonna take one photo with the front camera, and I do not wanna show a preview. I kinda of want this to be a surprise. So from here, if you're familiar with coding at all, you need to have action items after each of these. So it's not just enough to take a picture, it has to go somewhere. So we're gonna to have to ask it to save the photo, save photo to album. And you can click anywhere you want it to go. We're gonna save it to Recents. And let's go ahead and just see what happens when we click the play button. Waiting three seconds. Say cheese. Say cheese.
And look at that. It took the picture. We ran the code. Let's go ahead, check our photos. And there it is. So again, all we'd have to do is just simply rotate this bad boy around um, to get that to go where we want it to go. But other than that, that is a terrible picture of me. But nonetheless, the code worked. And it's that simple to build a code. And that's a really cool thing is you can use integration between Alexa, the mm -hmm. Google, you can use um, cancel. Uh, you can, uh, you can cross pollinate basically all of your different smart home integrations. So I also use some, if this, then that functions to work within this, but it is really, really cool. All of the things that you can do here, and there's just basically no limit to, to what you can do. Um, so in my next video, tune in, I'm going to kind of explain how the NFC tags work and how to use those as a trigger with the uh, iOS shortcuts. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this informative. Any questions, hit me up in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to those. Have a great day. Smash the like button if you like this one and subscribe for more. Take care.